Joining me now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, man, going to have his second professional fight coming up on March 18th. Valor Fights 41, Chandler Cole. Chandler won his pro debut back at Valor Fights 36 back in August of last year. And uh, we had Chandler on the podcast back then. Glad to have him back on the show. I, I, Chandler, I appreciate time as always. I remember when we talked the last time, you, you you said that, and my biggest takeaway was, I'm the guy that has everything to lose making your pro debut. So, with all that being said, uh, you know, it, it, was it an A plus performance for yourself on that night? Uh, yes, uh, yes, and no. Uh, you know, I stood. Up, I'm a wrestler, of course, and uh, I told myself, you know, I was going to stand up with the guy. I was going to fight, and uh, I felt like I did everything I was supposed to. I mean, it did get a little sloppy, like my my technique. But I've worked on it since then, so, and, you know, it was fast, and everyone likes when you get in and get out, so, I mean, that's the A-plus part of it. How many times have you gone back and watched that fight? Uh, plenty. I mean, I've watched it over and over again. Uh, I need to learn how to, you know, uh, I've been working on my stance. Just in general, I feel like I was standing really flat-footed. That might have been from my nerves. Uh, when I wasn't focusing on uh, standing up, like when I'm, mainly focusing on grappling i realize i'm on my toes i'm moving more but when i knew that i wanted to stand it's like i was real flat-footed uh he didn't execute on it i don't know if he noticed it or not but uh since then i've worked on that so we'll see where we'll, we'll see how this fight ends up for me being flat-footed was that something that uh maybe you didn't realize that you were showing that trait just in, in training for that fight or is it something that just for whatever reason on that night it, it just happened uh, it definitely didn't train for it. I, I'm very active when I'm uh, sparring in practice. That's one thing everybody tells me. You know, they're like, oh, you're a big guy, but you move like you're 125 pounds, and I laugh about it. And uh, But uh, I trained properly. I just, when it got fight night, you know, it's like Mike Tyson said, everybody everybody has a game plan, so you get punched in the mouth. And I felt like that's, uh, that's kind of what happened. I got in there, and I told myself I was going to stay away from my wrestling. And uh, I think I just stood flat-footed because of the nerves, because I knew I wasn't going to go to my strong suit. And uh, But once I got comfortable, you know, I started throwing. I threw a front kick, uh, knocked into the cage, and then from there, I mean, I just I let loose, and it worked out in my favor. You mentioned about nerves. Were were the nerves different for the pro fight as opposed to any amateur fight you had? Oh, yes, yes. You know, uh, amateur, you know, you're going out there and fighting for no money, so you're not really – not really concerned you want to win but you're not really like beating yourself to death uh this time i went out there and i was thinking all right if i win i get paid this much if i or if i lose i get paid this much if i win i get paid double and you know i love money I, i'll be the i love making money this is what i do and uh i, I fought i try to fight full time like right now i'm at work I'm, I'm a substitute teacher but it's not it's not enough to make a living so I spend a lot of time training so you know, that, that, that's where my nerves came from is, you know, you got all these people coming to watch you. You know, you're supposed to be that hometown hero. You don't really want to disappoint anybody, and you definitely don't want to go home broke plus beat up. What, what uh, subjects do you do? Uh, do you teach as a substitute teacher? Um, mainly uh, at, like, middle schools or primary schools. I teach kids. Uh, I try to stay away from high schools. I mean, kids now, I'm 22, so I'm basically still a kid. So I I can't to me mentally I don't feel like I can take that as serious right now, but uh, I teach everything. Uh, last week I taught band. Today I'm teaching home ec. So I mean it's fun. It's real fun. Yeah, my my wife is actually a teacher. She teaches fourth grade. <laughs> she does. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. She's... I mean, did, did when when you're growing up, did you ever think about being a teacher? Uh. I, I thought about being a, a gym teacher, but uh, I tried the whole college scene, and like right now, I just feel like it's not for me. Uh, mentally, my mind wasn't in it, and anytime I do something, I want to be 100% dedicated into it. So just right now in my life, but uh, I'm going to try to take some uh, classes just here and there because education, and I don't care if someone's a fighter or they're like uh, they're fighter or whatever they want to do in life, you know, Education is always important. I feel like, you know, even for me, I feel like every time I learn something, it helps me as a fighter to just my thinking process. So uh, I definitely, 
am thinking about doing more classes, just like online classes or something here and there. But right now I don't want to be a full-time student because I don't feel like I can mentally dedicate myself to it. And this fight is a, a catch weight of 220 pounds. So uh, do you actually have to cut any weight for this fight? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got to cut some weight. <laughs> Uh, it's a, I mean, it's a big cut, but, uh, back in October after my fight, I was lifting and, uh, my back went out on me and I was sidelined for, uh, up until January. So I've only been really running and working out and stuff for, I mean, maybe a month and a half, two months. And, uh, I packed on a lot of weight, you know, after my last fight, I told myself, I told the fans that I would never fight over 200 pounds again. And, you know, anyone who's listening, I'm sorry for lying to you because this one's at 220, but. You know, in life, sometimes things just hit you. You can't really can't really help it. So me coming back and fighting at 220, I'll take that. After this fight, I plan on fighting heavyweight maybe one more time, and then I'm cutting for sure. Uh, I've been working on my diet and my cardio. Where do, where do you think your long-term future is at? Is it 205 or maybe is it even 185? Well, my last amateur fight, I fought at 85. So, I mean, I've been there, and I really I enjoy being there. I was so much faster and more athletic. So I'd like to get there or possibly 70, but we'll see where we'll see. You know, uh, I told, I told my fans I'd never fight over 200 pounds again and I'm fighting 20 pounds heavier than that. So uh, I don't want to say anything for sure right now, but I would like to be smaller uh, in the long run. And your opponent here, uh, Philip McLaughlin, uh, he's also one to know in his career, also won his pro debut uh, last year via submission. His uh, came in, in the second round. He's fought in Valor fights before, um, you know, in preparations for this fight, I mean, how much tape have you sat there and watched of Philip? Uh, I really haven't watched a lot. Uh, no, no disrespect to him, but uh, I watched all I needed to see. Uh, I feel like on the ground, I'm better. Uh, stand up, he's real wild, and he uh, wings a lot of punches. So I've been picking up on all that. Uh, you know, he just has a lot of uh, I'm trying to think of the word. He has a lot of bad habits that I'm hoping to pick up on. How, so. You know, in training, they always talk about you're putting yourself in adversity, you know, in situations that you hope doesn't happen in the fight, but you want to train for just in case it ultimately does happen in a fight. For you, how, how much of your training is just the self-evaluation and looking at your own bad habits? Uh, I, I try to get as much uh, stand-up as possible because my, my worst – my my worst habit right now is dropping my hands and I've been practicing like crazy, nothing but stand up and uh, just keeping, like I'm short, but I'm really good at like being far out and then closing the distance. So I've been training a lot of that and uh, just take down off punches, uh, take down off their punches. So just, there's a lot of things I do wrong, but I really feel like I've been working on them. So I should be, I should be good to go. Do your coaches have any techniques that they do to you when you drop your hands? Uh, yeah. Like when I'm holding mitts, if I drop my hands, they rock me. I mean, they, they act like they're in a fight. They'll take the mitts and they'll rock me. So, I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting better at it. I think it's a confidence thing. Uh, I'll get out there and I'll be moving my head around and I feel like I'm, I, I won't get hit. And realistically, you know, Anderson Silva's the, one of the greatest fighters of all time. He didn't think he was going to get hit and then he got knocked out. So I keep telling myself, Chandler, you're not there yet. You're not on that level yet. Just keep, uh, keep learning, never stop learning and uh, working and I should be able to make it. So uh, all these bad habits that I have so far, you know, I've really been working on them and uh, I feel like they're, I feel like they're going to show in this fight. So I'm excited. How much do you watch other MMA fighters to, to see how, how they work the striking game and and understanding, you know, what they do and, and incorporating into what you're doing? Uh, all the time. Uh, I like to watch a lot of, you know, I'm a I'm a wrestler at heart. Like I've said that about ten times this uh, interview, but uh, I watch a lot of MMA wrestlers uh, because, you know, I think the biggest problem with fighters nowadays is you can be a wrestler and then all of a sudden they're like, hey, I want to be a Muay Thai fighter. Hey, I'm going to be a Jiu Jitsu fighter, and you know they go they go away from their strong point. You know, if uh, if my strongest lift is a bench press and I'm the best in the world at bench press, then why am I going to challenge someone else in a squatting contest? Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's a lot of people's problems. Uh, I know I'm a wrestler, so 
So I try to watch a lot of like uh, Daniel Cormier, Ben Askren, uh, just a lot of those guys, and I try to incorporate it into my fighting style. Yeah, it's interesting you bring that up because I, I think about guys who maybe try to become someone they're not, and I think a perfect example of this may be Damian Maya, where he kind of went through this stretch where you know he was trying to be basically be a striker, and then you know recently he just said, "Screw it, I'm just going to take guys down. I'm going to submit them." Um, you and know, he's been doing great at that. I yeah, mean, I mean, awesome. it, it, is it is it all tough for you? Because obviously, anyone who competes against you, they know your wrestling credentials. They know what you can do wrestling. Is there a part of you that do you want to do you want to showcase the striking, or is your thought process of you know what I'm just going to keep you know taking guys down, using my wrestling, do what I do best. And ultimately, I'm not putting tape on there about my striking so people don't know what my striking is like. Uh, my biggest thing is uh, I train striking almost every day, either mitts or light sparring, technical sparring, something of that nature, because there's going to be a day, you know, I train to be the best in the world, but I know that I'm not right now. And, you know, there's going to be a day I fight someone who's a better wrestler than me, and uh, hands down, I'm going to have to go out of that element, you know. So I train uh, striking all the time, so it's there. Uh, I guess the best way to put it is, you know, I have my wrestling. I lo- and, you know, wrestling was my first love before MMA. So uh, I have my wrestling, but I, I learn other things to complement it, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I do my stand-up, and I do my grappling, and I do all these things, but – realistically it's like the the main objective is wrestle and then all those things to help me win fights so uh you know i never feel i never want to be that guy that says hey i'm gonna change my whole style to to muay thai or hey i'm gonna change my whole style to just uh jiu-jitsu like i know where i'm great at and I, i want to just build off that so you know, and there's world champions everywhere that's doing that because they don't leave their element you know damian my he could possibly be a world champion, but, you know, he decided he wanted to be Rocky Balboa, and that's where a lot of his losses came from. And for you in this fight, how do you see yourself getting the victory? You know, uh, uh, it's, I, I'd hate to I'd hate to make a uh, suggestion, uh, not a suggestion, but a uh, prediction anywhere. Uh, I'm going to say first round. I know, I know a lot of people think I'm crazy. I think I'm going to surprise a lot of people. I think it's going to be first round. And, of course, this fight's going to be a part of Valor Fights 41 coming up on March the 18th. Of course, if you're not uh, in the area, you can watch this event on flowcombat.com. Chandler, as always, I appreciate the time, and good luck here at Valor Fights 41. Hey, thank you for having me. It's always great.